ITMReview.com here with the Retro Rampage podcast. Um, we're going to talk about Capcom. It's one of our most favorite topics here on the uh, Retro Rampage podcast. I'm Aaron and Zach here. What's up, guys? You know what? Uh, we're going to talk a little Capcom, like I said. Now, basically, this just happened this week, I believe. But uh, what the fuck is his name? Kobayashi. I think that's how you say his name. Mm-hmm. He came out and it sort of teased fans. And, well, there's one, there was one article where he said, basically, be on the lookout for uh, new games here, new games here, and a new game in a franchise you guys have all been clamoring for. You know, I'm just, that's not verbatim. But basically, it's like, oh, fucking Mega Man, oh my god. Um, and then there was another blurb, I can't remember what it was exactly, slapped my wrist for not doing my homework completely, but basically, he sort of put out a general survey out there. Hey, would you guys rather have, say, a Mega Man 11 or a this? You know? Um, so and so that that's crazy. And of course, that gets people up in a roar. I don't know why they wouldn't make a Mega Man 11. How? F- I mean, we have people down the street that could make an 8-bit game like Mega Man, you know, mm-hmm. these days. I mean, obviously, the level design talent has to be there, but it can't cost that much money, can it? Yeah. You know? How much? How much could it really cost? And they, and they, they're just gonna throw it on the fucking eShop, mm-hmm. or whatever. Not the eShop, you know, eShop, whatever. I just, I mean, it's not like they release physical copies of eight nine. So they I mean, should. How, how, they should, but how much money could it really cost? Um, but anyway, so there's that. And then to tie in with that, this week also, um, it was uncovered that Mega Man Legends two recently got a rating from the ESRB, which, you know, most people are assuming, oh my god, it's coming to, uh, you know, most likely the PSN network or something. It could be. It could be coming to the PSN, or it might be coming to some sort of new Mega Man collection, you know? I mean, because they just released the the classic Mega Man collection on the PlayStation 4 and all that. Um, it's, It's probably more than likely going as a download, but, I mean, I think it'd be cool. I could see them doing like a Mega Man Legends re-release uh, physical copy. I mean, they've been they've been releasing a lot of stuff. I would think would just be limited to just uh, download lately. You know, I would have never thought they would have released physical copies of the Resident Evil. You know, yeah, uh, Zero and the Resident Evil One and things like that. Um, there are physical copies of things like Shovel Knight and fucking Ducktales and. Uh, but no, I mean, so either way, it sounds like it's going to get released, and that's a big. I mean, that's been clamored for for a long time, and. Uh, Mega Man Legends 2 goes for a fucking mint if you're a collector online, so that's good for people like us, too, that, you know, I wouldn't have a chance to play it if I wanted to, because I'm not paying two, three hundred dollars for it. Uh, but, you know, so I don't know. It, news like this, mixed with, hey, Resident Evil 2 remakes and all that shit, it sounds like Capcom is bending a little. They're kind of giving people what they want, things they want. Maybe, I mean, this is... This is more than we could say for, uh, what the fuck, I'm already forgetting their name, Konami. Mm-hmm. You know, they're actually trying to do a little damage control, perhaps. Now, I mean, it's good damage control. It is good. Like, oh, finally give somebody a Mega Man. Let's, let's give them what they want. Oh, they they love Resident Evil. Let's remake Resident Evil 2. Uh, you know, let's do this. Let's do that. I, I don't think they'll be fully recovered until they, you know, really go all in and give us an official Resident Evil 7 and make it yeah. legit. I'm kind of scared that this is their damage. This is. I'm kind of scared that something like the Resident Evil 2 remake isn't damage control uh, for the past. I'm scared it's damage control for what's coming out later, right? Yeah, I, I, I had that feeling too. Like, like, oh, you know, we're gonna come out with another action because we're gonna try and capitalize yet again and do it successfully again. So let's warm them up with this so they can't be too mad at us. Yeah, that's what it seems like because that's that's what's gonna get more people buying it is action. So it's like they're numbing the pain or whatever. Numbing the pain, or who knows? Maybe it um, will kind of get people. It'll it'll have Capcom and the brand of Resident Evil in a very positive light. If people just got done playing Resident Evil Two, the remake, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody will be in good spirits with them. They'll be in the good graces again, and then maybe more people will be apt to go out and buy the new game at least first week. You know, it, it could be a couple of different things. So, like I said, it, it sounds like it's more. I'm not too sure if it's damage control for the past or damage control for the future, but. That's when I appreciate that. I mean, people should listen to their fan base. So that's good. But I'll be completely 100% sold when they, you know, make a good seven, make a good horror game. And you know what? I'll even go as far as they need to go the reboot route if you have to. I mean, that's so popular, isn't it? You know, just coming yeah. out with uh, do it. I mean, if you don't, don't remake the first game that's been done before, but 
tell the story of Resident Evil through a new perspective with new characters. If you yeah, got set to. it in another isolated place that we yeah, haven't done like yet. A, a new canon, basically. Yeah, a like new a, canon. Like a cabin in the woods would be great. Even uh, do that, and you that way you could kind of have your cake and eat it too. You could sort of have the pseudo reboot thing going on, but basically, I think we need brand new characters. We're done with Wesker, dude. All that whole canon has been—it's a little played out now. It's done. Yeah, it's been exhausted. Uh, as much as you know, Leon's and Chris's were great. You know, we can only pack on so many steroids for Chris Redfield. He can't get any bigger. It's done. I mean, um, at this point, Wesker has the T virus in him, so he could just keep coming back anyway. <sighs> And, and he's got a fucking son now. He's got a yeah. grandkid. It's just, we've jumped the shark on this. It's just stupid. So reboot it. Reboot it. And like I said, it could be that pseudo-sequel reboot where, like you said, I mean, I don't know. It, it probably wouldn't be canon technically because I'm pretty sure the whole fucking world knows about it. But whatever. You don't really have, that can kind of be unspoken. Let it be something that's not canon with the characters that we know. Somewhere else. Somewhere completely different. Um... And just sort of retell the story again from fresh eyes, new characters. Because because at this point, it would be hard um, if they went back and Resident Evil 7, for example, was a legit return to horror. We're talking uh, uh, Silent Hill style. We're talking uh, that PT demo shit. Mm-hmm. It would be hard to take seriously if they did that and then gave us Chris Redfield in it. Now, Chris Redfield's already been a little tainted, right? Mm-hmm. We saw him in four, or sorry, five and six and Give us new characters, just new slate. I think that'd be that. I'd, I'd forgive them for that because it's like I think that's just the best, the best move. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't. And make it really dark since you got brand new characters, brand new characters. Go all in. Make it fucked up. Make it fucked up like Silent Hill Two fucked up. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah. Or like Zach, like you've mentioned prior, <laughs> maybe even steal a page or two from the. Uh, original draft of Resident Evil 4 with, like, the dolls and the paranormal shit. Yeah, that'd be cool, too. You know, whatever you gotta do. Because you got a whole bunch of games right now that are doing... that are try, at least trying to do what Resident Evil should be doing, right? These horror yeah. games have been coming out. Um, Evil Within's. And, I mean, there's, there's been a slew of them. So it's almost like a resurgence has been dying to happen. I don't think it's quite happened. Because we have these games coming out, but they're not quite cracking the dome. But they're coming out. So maybe maybe one of the big dogs, one of these people that actually pioneered the genre, needs to spearhead it. Mm-hmm. So and let let PT demo be made. I mean, people need to make that shit. Um, which, by the way, I think that now was there was there any word on that too? Wasn't like Kojima gonna be were, were him and uh, Del Toro gonna be doing something, or maybe let's Norman Reedus? Aren't they? Isn't there something that's gonna be done like with yeah, Kojima's new studio? Yeah, they're working on something right now with Kojima's new studio. Yeah, why not fucking move the PT demo? I mean, just, obviously they yeah, can't call it Silent it. Hills. They can't. We Silent Hills was basically exactly what I was just pitching. The new Resident Evil should be. It was gonna be a reboot, right? Yeah. Right. It's kind of a pseudo reboot. Whatever. A new perspective. Pull the. They can easily take what they were fucking doing, even if they don't. For whatever reason, they don't own the rights to what they had already started. Do it again. They didn't get that far. Just start over from yeah. scratch. Do what you were going to do, and just do it under uh, Kojima's new new brand. And call it something different. Yeah, and you know what? I get it. Silent Hills is a big brand name um, that was attached to it, but at this point, that whole thing was so highly prolific and in the media and the whole PT demo thing. It would. It would. It's just as strong. You know, without Silent Hills attached to it, I think. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I miss Survival Horror. I miss, I miss uh, so, so I can't say the fucking word. Survival Hollow. Uh, um, but yeah, so I, I miss it. I want Capcom to really. I, think I, that's what I, do. I miss how it made me feel when I was a kid. That's what I want to see come back is where you're actually afraid to play the game, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I and I, and I also entertain the idea that eh, that's also reliving glory days. You know, it's that whole well, they don't make it like they used to be, or you know, uh, they don't. I get it. We're not kids anymore. I mean, it's yeah. it's harder to get impressed. We're the older we get, the less and less first times we have, right? Yeah. Um, but I know you can only up the ante so much, but you know, try. Uh, you know, because when you were, it wouldn't fly today. You play if if a kid played Resident Evil One today, and they're going down that corridor, and the fucking dogs jump through the windows or whatever. Um, yeah, this day and age, that probably wouldn't do anything to anybody. That was scary back then. Yeah, that was really scary back then. Um, now I don't. I, being a grown man, I don't. I don't. 
I think they could still do it, man. I think they could make it could scare us in different ways. The PT demo was pretty scary. You mm-hmm. can do it. You can yeah. do it. I mean, so um, I don't think it's gonna. Be, it'll, it's just gonna be evolved. But I don't care. At least let survival horror be at least what's in the namesake. Let it be mm-hmm. scary. May, there, it's a horror game. Be, a, you know, it, it, give us the vibe of a horror movie. We don't get that in horror movies anymore. It's just I think it can still be done. Our standards have just lowered. Mm-hmm. That's with scares in video games. That's with movies too. The fucking shit people are praising would have never gotten these this much praise and these scores back in the day. You know, I don't think so. And I think the PT demo, the Silent Hills, that was something refreshing. It's like, ah, this is what we're hungry for. So hopefully they're kind of continuing off and doing that with Kojima. Like I said, it's the same thing with movies, and I'm not going to get off on a tangent about movies, but point in, point in check, take the last couple of years in the world of horror movies. Um... The, the big indie movies that scream out to me that people just jerked off and said, you gotta see it, you gotta, it's so good, yeah. 98% fresh ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. The first one is The Babadook. Mm-hmm. And then people were going ape shit over that. That was about a year and a half ago. You know, six, seven, eight months later, we had It Follows. Everybody's mm-hmm. fucking going ape shit over that. That's, that's the problem, too, is people need to stop overhyping it. But you Because know they walked into that movie not expecting it to scare the fuck out of them and it did so if you go into it thinking it's gonna scare the fuck out of you it's not you know what I mean I, I it just I think those movies are not very good they're very subpar I'll give them credit where it's due I'll give it I'll give them credit in certain areas where it's due but like there's just okay think of it like this so where does the Babadook shine the Babadook I think the woman in that did a good job but she yeah. was the only actress in it. it was it was good the kid was fucking annoying as shit uh, the the dude in it was fucking horrible. You know what? I, I'll give props to the the fantasy storybook element of it. You know, um, it, I'm not saying it's never been done before, but it kind of gave it its own charm. It had a cool cinematography about it. Uh, but dude, it was it was laden with horror cliches, down to the fucking telephone trick. Ba ba doop. How many movies have we seen where you answer the telephone and the fucking creature is fucking on the phone? It, it was all over that fucking movie, so it wasn't nothing new. And I'm sorry, the fucking thing with the dad at the end, the dead, it was the dead dad, the widow, all of it was fucking so cliche. But this is what people were jerking off to. I get it, it's indie, but the standards have lowered. Now, it, it might have had one or two things going for it. But back in the day, man, the movies that were really fucking good, they, they fired on all cylinders. They weren't just good here. You know? Yeah. Hell, the original Hellraiser fired on all cylinders. The characters were mm-hmm. creepy. Uh, that's that's the big my biggest problem with new movies. Oh, sorry, like you know, Exorcist the whole movie's good. Uh, Hellraiser the whole movie's good. Evil Dead the whole movie's fucking good. We're talking not just look at it follows. Everybody who defends that movie, e- even if you come at them with some some, uh, some criticism, they'll kind of all they have left is well, it's got a really good soundtrack. I'll give it that. It had a good it had a decent soundtrack, but fuck man, that's not enough. Mm-hmm. Like the, the soundtrack helped it. It helped kind of create an atmosphere, but you can't have that, man. You look at a movie like the original Alien, Alien, everything was perfect. You love the characters. You felt it when the the cast, the characters were getting fucking taken down one by one by the Alien. It had the suspense going for it. It had atmosphere. It had the script. It had the direction, and it even had the fucking tagline. Every everything about that movie was perfect. You know, in space, no one would hear your scream. Everything was perfect. Halloween, it was well-rounded, right? Everything. You know, it's not like Halloween sucked, but the music was cool, because, you know, Halloween, the Jar of this, this it's really iconic, right? That music's fucking great. Mm-hmm. It, it contrib- But it's not like the movie sucks underneath it. It contributed to an already good script, good idea. Um, so, this, the standards have lowered I, dramatically. Yeah, I get it. It had a cool soundtrack, but you're blinded. My biggest pet peeves of movies these days are unlikable characters. Fuck, man. Do you like? Can you honestly tell me you liked any of the characters and it follows? That no. bl- that blank. Do you, you forget them like while the movie's on? You kind of forget they exist when they pop up in new scenes. Like who's this yeah. again? I mean, the lead actress is that the bleakest, fucking boring character I've ever seen in my life. And her friends, the all, all I can remember is that dumb bitch with the fucking like iPad thing. The whole movie. These characters were annoying. In the it just they're horrible. Like I said, Alien. All the crew members, you fucking loved every. They all had a unique identity about them, and you remembered them. 
uh, for something. Even in movies where they were kind of like uh, form formulaic, right? Even like a movie where we've seen it a million times, take uh, one of the sequels to Friday the 13th. Yeah, it was formula, but at least they were all different. Of course, you had the you had the nerd, you had the fucking bully jock, you had the fucking slut. <laughs> you know, we we the, the '80s thing, but at least they were all different. You kind of remembered them, right? Yeah, it's, it's just not like it follows, dude. They're all the same fucking bland emo, fucking downtrodden, fucking teenager. I, I don't remember mu- any much. They're of the all the fucking all. same. And then uh, uh, Baba Duke, it's just. There's not enough originality, and then there's there uh, there's another movie I saw last week, um, and Riverman uh, from BTM as well. He, he he was even praising it. Well, he said it was really good. He he hyped it up for me, uh, but and then it looked cool. It's this movie called We Are Still Here. Have you heard about it? I've heard about it. Okay, it's that. another thing. You know, you see it on paper. I saw the cover. I'm like, wow, the cover art's old school. It's very Lucio Fulci. You know, it looks really neat. And I kind of like read the synopsis, and it, it seemed like a very throwback '70s, you know, haunted house type movie, right? Possessed house. I'm like, okay, you know what? I get it. That's not the most original thing in the world, but you know what? I'll, I'll buy it, right? And and I went on Rotten Tomatoes, 98 fucking percent fresh. Whoa, this must be good, right? See, I don't do that. I know, but like, but, but see, what got me is my best friend River. Yeah. He even said, hey, you should watch this. I really liked it. It's very bleak and it works for it. Like, okay, all right. Uh, Rivers Endorsement. And I watched, I actually went and bought it. <clears throat> I bought it on Rivers Endorsement on Blu-ray. And I, I was really looking forward to watching it. And I watched it. And you know what? The cinematography was, I mean, it had a, it had a really cool bleak look that worked for it. You know, it was, it was a house. It was centered around a house and um, sort of a possessed house type of thing. But the movie itself, I'm like, wow, this movie's boring as shit. It's mm-hmm. not a unique idea. It, it was an, it, I, the whole time I'm watching this movie, like, this seems like an American version of House by the Cemetery to me. Um, <laughs> except worse. And mommy, that's a ghost at the window, mommy. Mommy, mommy, mommy. The fucking the- woman and the, the little boys overdub. Oh. Yes. But no, and this is what I was saying the whole time, man. I was messaging River while I was watching. I'm like, dude, these fucking actors, they make the overdubs in a Fulci film look good. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I told him because these actors first of all once again it looked cool the cinematography is cool whatever but that's not enough uh, these characters man they fucking sucked it's like there's a dad there's a mom uh, they're grieving over a son they have their two friends come over and it's very minimal when you only have like five or six characters in the whole movie make them fucking stand out apart from each other for, mm-hmm. for god's sakes please that, you, you, they all suck the acting it wasn't even like it was bad acting. Like, you know, I can watch Troll 2 and be entertained, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but these guys acted like uh, infomercial actors. It was so weird. It was bad, but not enjoyable bad. They were acting like infomercial actors, and it really took you out of it. The script was fucking dreadful. The dialogue was so bad. And it, it just... And it was funny because I watched the... Uh, I watched the, uh, the the making of it after I watched it because I kind of want. I like to see the, what goes into making a shitty movie too. I'm like, what are these assholes thinking? I want to see this. <laughs> and it's so funny because I called it. The director's like, you know, one of our favorite movies was uh, it's House by the Cemetery, and we wanted I'm like, oh my god, he's going there. We wanted to, we were trying to basically make our version of House by the Cemetery. I'm like, fuck you guys, you guys suck. What did you think of uh, what, what was that one movie that was kind of the same way uh, with by Ty West? Uh, House of the Devil. Yeah, did you like that one? You know what? Uh, Riverman absolutely loved that one. To me, it was a, a slow burn. It was a little too slow for me. Yeah, well, I have to be in the right mood when I watch movies yeah, like that. Yeah, but I really like Ty West. And, um, yeah. you know, what? I, I, Riverman likes House by the, House, House of the Devil the best. I love The Innkeepers. Oh, you yeah. don't necessarily have to have a totally fresh idea. The Innkeepers, you know, we've, we've seen Haunted Hotel, Haunted. It's a haunted house shit, right? But it, it's got to offer something a little new, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I like Innkeepers because it wasn't dated. It was modern day, but it still had a vibe about it. Um, you just have to have something, man. And this movie, uh, we are still here. All it had going for it was, eh, cinematography. Okay. It yeah. looked kind of cool, but fucking man, everything else is dreadful. And this is the shit that gets distribution. Like, this is the shit people like. And I even told River after I saw that, man, it's like the whole, uh, I felt like doing the whole Terrence and Phillip thing on South Park where they're on Conan O'Brien and they had Brooke Shields. Once on the set of Blue Lagoon, I farted. And they just slap her in the face. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do to Todd and River. <laughs> and I'm like, 
Riverman, I was like, Todd, dude, your fucking standards have lowered. And after I kind of explained my opinion on it and how I, I went under the same tie route, how people's standards have lowered for things like this. He's like, you're right. Fuck. He's like, because I'm like, there's no way this movie stacks up. You, this movie, you're saying this movie is as good as uh, Dawn of the Dead. This movie is as good as Evil Dead. It's no, it's not at all. Because you yeah. get you get a little jaded with everything and a little you know foggy eyed and and it's just not because um, those movies fire on all cylinders and we don't have any of those movies anymore. Yeah. So whatever, man. So I, it just blows me away the things that get funding, and I'm talking video games too. It blows me away the games that get funding. Um, it blows me away the the movies that get funded and distribution rights. I'm like, God, man, the the world's ready for another revolution. I think in gaming and in film, mm-hmm. we need another Pulp Fiction. Yeah. We need another director to come out that's really going to shake it up in the movie like that. It's been a good 20, 22 years, right? It's like we need another ugh, movie that's going to sort of change it up a little bit. Yeah. Inspire some new filmmakers. Because uh, art imitates other art, right? So all we have is all this shit out there. You go to a red box, man. You see like 20 different Danny Trejo zombie movies or something. <laughs> or some bullshit. And it's like, what what's getting spawned off? More shit. It's like, you know, whatever. So somebody's got to break through that shell and make something good. Mm-hmm. Something something fresh, something good, so we can get more fresh shit and we'll be good for another 10 years. But uh, but like I said, same thing goes for video games too. Um, it's I- I'm done with the... Give us straight up horror. Don't give us action horror. Don't, you know, don't hold our hands. You know, games like Resident Evil 5 were kind of fun, but... There was, no, there was no challenge. There was no terror. There was no survival about it. You gave me weapons and ammo every two seconds, and it then there was no challenge to it. It was just plowing through shit and shooting it, which is gratifying for like five minutes, right? Eh, mm-hmm. Whatever. Just let's let's reinvent the wheel a little bit. That's all I'm saying. Do you have anything to elaborate on, Zach? I know I kind of took that one over, and I went on a big fucking rant. Sorry. Yeah, I'm. I agree. I got nothing else to add. Moral of the story is your taste in movies and games suck. <laughs> I don't know. Mine is better. I'm conditioned is better. <laughs> I make the hair silky and smooth and soft. I don't fucking know, man. Adam Sandler sucks too. Anyway, <laughs> let us know what you guys think. Um, I think the I think we're on to something, Zach, with the Resident Evil thing. I really think in this case they should go the pseudo Silent Hills reboot thing. We can't do these characters anymore. And hell, they've been taking so long on that and given blur. They haven't really talked about it. It's not. I would be surprised. I would. Maybe that's what they're doing. Where can they go after six? Right. Yeah. Where can they go with those characters after that? I don't think there's anywhere else to go. I wouldn't be. You know, I'm calling it right now. I'm calling it right now. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a pseudo type reboot thing. I think it will be. Even if they go the action route. There's just nowhere else to go from six. There really isn't with those characters. So let us know what you think on that notion. Um, and all the Capcom stuff, actually, and the Mega Man stuff, and uh, you know, Mega Man 11, and all that stuff. I, I, I'm I looking forward to that. I'm, I, I'll definitely welcome it. Um, yeah, let us know. Uh, subscribe, YouTube, iTunes, websites, all that good stuff. btmreview.com. Uh, more stuff on the way soon, actually. Um, Actually, I personally have some big announcements coming soon, too. But also, be on the lookout for Zach's podcast, Mac and Zach. They're going to save the world. They're gonna, I think they're going to kill their doppelgangers in the next episode. Mac and Zach of the future. We're hey. going to try to set up a, uh, a crossover. Rivalry. A crossover? Oh, are you really going to get a hold of them? You should. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. You should fucking do it. But you got to do a <laughs> campaign first. got to do it WWE style, and you got to talk shit on them for a good few episodes. <laughs> talk shit on the podcast. Get it built up for, like, a couple of months. And then announce, hey, we're coming for you, brother. <laughs> Dude, that would be so fucking funny. A call out episode, and then you send it to him, get a hold of him, just get him on board. Get him on board and be like, hey, just play along or, or whatever. That'd be fucking hilarious. <laughs> uh, but anyway, let us know. Give us feedback. We love it. Subscribe and share and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm Aaron. I'm Zach. You guys are not, unfortunately. Um, but have a wonderful, lovely weekend. <laughs>